Hi, I'm Tim Carter from AskTheBuilder.com, and I'm in a pretty strange situation right now. I'm up in the attic of a brand new home, and just a week ago, I finished putting in the plumbing, waste, and vent system for this home. It was really a fun job to do. And just over my right shoulder, you should be able to see the full-size vent pipe that leaves the roof. Let me tell you all about a plumbing vent system for a new home. Okay, this is the plumbing vent pipe right where it leaves the roof of this particular home. It, it goes out the roof right on the other side of that top cord of that flat truss. And I know you can't see it, but trust me, it goes through the roof there. The reason it's a four inch pipe is because we're in central New Hampshire right now, and it gets very, very cold here in the winter time, and you need to have a full size vent pipe uh, so that these vent pipes don't get choked off with ice. What actually happens is right here where I'm standing in this attic, it could easily get 20 below zero and the moist warm air that's inside this vent pipe can actually start to freeze and choke off on the inside of the pipe. Notice right here I transitioned from four inch PVC to three inch PVC and it's going to stay three inch PVC as it travels to bring air into the system and of course that's how these plumbing vent pipes work a lot of people think that a plumbing vent pipe is much like a chimney for a fireplace where you know in a fireplace you have smoke that goes up and out you know to the atmosphere well guess what what these pipes are really for is to let air from the outside into the plumbing system i know that doesn't make sense but here's what happens Right, right now, let's imagine that no one's using the plumbing system and all of a sudden, somebody flushes a toilet. Well, all of that water that rushes from the toilet down the drain pipe down below, it pushes air out of the system and that air needs to get replaced. And the air comes into this pipe and it is, it is sucked down this pipe extremely fast. You'd be stunned how fast the air goes through this pipe. And so these vent pipes supply the much needed air that your plumbing system needs to stay in equilibrium. Now you'll notice right here, once again remember, this is a three inch pipe and it stays three inch the whole way. Make sure your plumber does that. They're gonna to try to talk you into just using smaller pipes like two inch or inch and a half. It's really a mistake. But here we've got a three by two inch T and this particular T is here because this two inch vent pipe goes all the way through the trusses down about 50 to 60 feet through the house and about 30 feet from here it branches off to the left to capture the kitchen sink but farther on it goes down and supplies air to the second bathroom in this home as well as the laundry room but if we come back here what happens is this three inch pipe continues on over about seven feet and then it makes a 90 degree bend where it goes down to start to feed air to the lower bathroom. Let's go down and look at that. Okay, I'm back down on the uh, floor, the subfloor. I'm kind of glad about that. It can be a little dangerous up there balancing on those narrow uh, trusses. But uh, that's a shot up there that you rarely get to see. Most people never get to get up in those trusses and actually see what the plumbing vent pipe system is doing. So once again, over my right shoulder, you should be able to see the three inch plumbing vent pipe that is now coming down out of the attic and it's going to start feeding air into this system. Let's take a look at it. Okay, there is that 90 degree bend up above that I just talked about a few moments ago. And of course, if you travel that three inch pipe over, you can come over here and you can kind of see where it goes up through the roof. But look what happens. The air comes through that pipe, comes across, hits that 90 and it starts to come down. And here we are, this is the master bathroom. And once again, this is the first place right here where you have water enter the system. That is a three by inch and a half Y with a 45 degree bend on it. And that is the branch arm, that's what we call it right here, for the master bathroom vanity. Okay, so remember, once, if all of a sudden you fill the sink and the vanity of the water to the brim and then you pull the stopper, this inch and a half pipe is going to fill completely with water from all of that water rushing into the plumbing system. That water comes through, hits that 45, goes down the Y, and starts to enter the three inch pipe. And it's pushing air out of the way, and it's pushing air down towards the septic system. Well, that air needs to be replaced. And as the water flows down the pipe, air comes down 
the vent pipe here, you know, to replace that air. So it's very, very important. That's how it works. Now what happens is, down in the basement, and it, because it's so dark, you're not going to be able to see it. This particular vent pipe, it makes a 45 degree, it makes a 90 degree bend, I'm sorry, bend right below the wall. And it heads off at a 45 degree angle. And you can actually see, I drew it on the uh, floor here for you. You can see those lines. Well, that center line right there is the center line of the pipe, and it hits the center line of that. See that other pencil that's going through the letter A? Well, guess what? There is the toilet pipe, and there is a three inch toilet pipe, and right here where that letter A is, is a three inch by three inch Y, and that particular pipe goes all the way across under the floor, you know, over to the foundation wall there. So that's uh, where the vent pipe actually connects to the main drain system is right under the floor right here with a three by three Y. Okay, let me show you a few other vent pipes so maybe it makes some sense. And these, uh, these are vent pipes that are once again in the master bathroom. Check this out. Okay, this is the, this big black thing right here. I'll go around the corner here. This is the shower for the master bathroom. And this is the vent pipe for the master bath shower. And it connects down underneath the floor. Uh, it's, that's an inch and a half pipe you're looking at. And there's a two inch by inch and a half T that's underneath there because the shower drains need to be two inch uh, drain pipe. So this particular vent pipe, you know, comes up, 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 up. And there you can see it connects to another vent pipe that if we go over here and then we start to come down this wall, this is the vent pipe that's going to be for the master bath whirlpool, which is going to be in this space right in here. So I know it sounds crazy, but you need all of these vent pipes to supply air for each and every fixture. And of course, what happens is you can see this inch and a half pipe comes up over here. It's up in the attic there. And now look at this. You can see right here where it makes the 90 degree bend and it goes over, over, over here. And right there, look at that. It connects to the three inch vent pipe that is coming down from the attic. So that is exactly how the master bathroom shower and the master bathroom whirlpool get the air needed for their drain pipes. Isn't that cool? Okay, I'm here in the kitchen. What's over my right shoulder is the outside wall of the house. You should be able to see the windows right there. And I'm hoping that you can see the vent pipe that's taking care of the kitchen sink. Let's take a look at it. Okay, this is the drain pipe system and the vent pipe system for the kitchen sink. Uh, this is the, what we call the branch arm for the kitchen sink. And the way I pipe this, that is an inch and a half pipe right there. And, but this is a inch and a half by inch and a half by two inch T. So it's got inch and a half pipe that comes out, you know, and goes over to the branch line there. That's inch and a half pipe that goes up, but this is two inch pipe that goes down to the drain line and eventually connects to the septic system down in the basement. So whenever you're, you're plumbing a kitchen sink, it's really a good idea to put in a two inch um, stack is what we would call it. And uh, so it gives you extra capacity and it makes it harder for that line to get clogged up. But that's an inch and a half branch line, that's all you need. Now here's what happens. Remember, when you fill both sinks with water in your kitchen sink, and then you pull both stoppers, you completely fill that pipe right there with water. And that water rushes over, hits the T, and then starts its pathway down to the sewer or the septic system. Well, once again, it's pushing all types of air ahead of it down this two inch pipe, and that air needs to be replaced. Well, that air comes right here. It comes in through this vent pipe, that goes up, 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 up. Oops, it's going to get kind of dark here, but believe me, it'll come back. And there's the vent pipe that's going to go across the ceiling. We'll look at that in a minute. Let's take a look. Okay, here's the top plate of the wall, the outside wall at the kitchen sink. And there is the inch and a half vent line. And of course it goes up. And here it's going to travel all the way across the ceiling right here. And it's got a slope to it. It's got a slope just like a regular drain line. It's sloping at an eighth of an inch a foot. And right here, I know you can't see it. Well, you'll be able to see it right here. 
there, right, or right underneath it, right there, the vent pipes to the left, and there, the inch and a half vent for the kitchen sink connects to that two inch vent pipe that I told you about back at the beginning of the video. All right, I've kind of turned around. Here's the two inch vent pipe that's up in the attic once again, and there is the inch and a half pipe that's going over, over, over to that kitchen sink, if you remember, there's the windows. But let's come back here and see what happens with this two inch vent pipe. So here it is, it goes through the trusses. We're gonna follow it across. And you'll be able to see right here, it kinda makes a couple of bends. So what happens here is the first pipe that comes down from that two inch vent is an inch and a half vent pipe. And that inch and a half vent pipe is the vent for both the vanity sink, which is right here, and it also collects and supplies air through another inch and a half vent pipe for the toilet that you can see in the room right here. Here is the toilet flange on the other side. So once again, these vent pipes connect down to the pipes down in the basement. Sorry, it's too dark to see that. But once again, I'm just trying to explain to you about what vent pipes are in the walls that you can't see. And notice, when you install these, you always put the T's upside down because the air is coming down. It's like water. In other words, it's flowing this way and the bend goes this direction. So it comes down and goes that way. So that's the way you want the uh, T to be oriented so that it helps the flow of the air. Okay, once again, I'm up above this guest bathroom now. And let's see what happens with the rest of the vent line. So here it kind of jumps down, comes across, and right here you can see another connection up there. And there's a pipe that's coming down very close to us right here. Well, this vent pipe comes down and takes care of the tub and shower in this bathroom. But way up there where that vent pipe makes a 90 degree bend, it's going to go collect and supply air to the laundry room uh, in this home. So we're almost done with the vent pipes. Okay, I've walked down a hallway so that you can see it from the other angle, but there is the vent line that's gonna go across and connect to the two inch vent. But here we have it uh, making that bend and it's coming across the ceiling here, right here. You can see it, here it is, there it is. And I'm rotating around and there it makes a bend to come down this wall. And this is going to be the vent pipe for the laundry room, you know, washing machine drain here in this room. The actual piping is gonna be outside of the wall because we don't want that trap. You know, there's always a trap for the washing machine. If you put it in the wall here in New Hampshire, it'll freeze solid in the wintertime. So that'll get connected after the room's finished. But that's basically exactly what the vent pipes are all about. And once the insulation and drywall's all in, you never get to see them. So this is a very rare time for you to see all these pipes. And remember, these pipes all have fall to them. In other words, right here, this is the lowest part of the vent pipe in the entire system. And from this point, all the way back over to the roof, the vent pipes go uphill so that the water and the condensate in the vent pipes flows back to this point. So understand that there is water, uh, you know, from condensation that collects in these vent pipes, and it needs to drain because these pipes can never allow to have standing water in them. So right here, it, all that water flows backwards and come, it's gonna be coming down this pipe right here. Isn't that cool? Okay, wasn't that pretty cool? Now you know a little bit about plumbing vent pipes. You may first wonder, Tim, how is it that you know so much about plumbing vent pipes? Well, I know I'm the S the Builder guy, but among other things, for about the past 32 years, I've been a master plumber. I always loved to do plumbing. I did a lot of plumbing work on almost all of my own jobs. And I just find it very uh, interesting and very satisfying to do plumbing work. So I just wanted to share what a plumbing vent pipe system is, how it works, because you know once they get hidden behind the walls, the average person never gets to see these wonderful pipes, and you most of the time don't even realize they exist. So you often have as much piping up in the walls and ceiling of your home than you have actually down below the floor. So it's a very important part of the plumbing system. Make sure if you live in a cold climate, you have your plumber install full-size vents, either three inch or four inch, so you never get 
you know, cut off from air if it gets bitter cold outside. I'm Tim Carter for AskTheBuilder.com. If you want to discover more home improvement tips, go to AskTheBuilder.com. 